two of our Centipede game that we're writing in JavaScript with p5.js. I'm just showing you here what we're headed toward. This is our, our goal. Uh, so far, all we have is our player. Uh, the little green guy at the bottom there that we can control with our keyboard. But what we want to add next is the centipede character, which of course is the red object, worm-like thing with uh, the yellow border that's heading toward us. So that's what we're shooting for. Right now, remember, this is what we have. We can move the uh, character around. And let's... Uh, Let's get back to our code. This was what we ended with at the end of part one. Notice I've made a couple adjustments here. I added in a note about part two. We are going to add one new file, this centipede.js file right here. And you can see that in my index, in the header here, I've added a, a reference to that source file, which we're going to create. So that character that we showed on the screen, let's bring that back real quick here. That centipede, notice it's made up of little body parts, those little circles that create the entire centipede. So I'm going to start by creating one um, object that just keeps track of one of those little body parts. We're going to call it a centipede node, and then we'll build our centipede by piecing together an array of those nodes. All right, let's dive in. So now that we've attached that centipede.js file, let's start to put some code in that file. You can see I already have one ready to roll here. I added the comments in ahead of time just to save us some typing in the video. But like I said, what we're going to do first is we're going to create a centipede node object, which is essentially one of those red circles that builds the centipede. So we'll make our constructor function here. I'm going to call this centipede node. And when we create one of those circles, we need a position, so an xy position. We need a size. And then the nodes are going to have a speed because they're going to be moving. So we'll create that object. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's move this down to the bottom of the object. And then we'll start by assigning the properties. So we'll assign this dot x to the value of x. We'll assign this dot y to the value of y. We'll assign this dot size to size. Oops. That last video, I wasn't paying close enough attention to my typing. I'm going to try to pay better attention today and see how that goes. And then this dot speed. Okay. So there's our object uh, properties. And now we're going to have some methods to go along with this. The first thing this node wants to be able to do is show itself. So let's make a show function, this dot show. We do not need to send show any parameters. We just need to tell it how to draw one of these nodes. So you'll notice I had that yellow border around the circle. So I used a stroke weight of 2. I can't spell anything today, just like the last video. I'm on a huge roll here when it comes to accurate typing. Uh, then we're going to set the stroke color and that sort of red color, the uh, yellow color that I used was uh, 255, 255, Obviously you can adjust those if you'd like. And I filled with red, which is 255, zero, zero. And then I made an ellipse. At this dot x, this dot y, and those are circles, so it's just going to be this dot size, this dot size. Let's make sure I didn't make any typos there. Stroke weight, stroke, everything's looking good, but of course I made that little file list error here. It, I need this just to say fill. Come on, man. All right, there we go. 
So that is the method that will show one of our little red circles from the body of our centipede. Uh, the other thing this thing needs to be able to do is move. So let's make a this.move. Again, this method's not going to receive any parameters. Essentially, what we want to do is move the x coordinate because the centipede just goes back and forth across the screen moving along the x axis. So, this dot x, we're just going to add the speed to it. So, let's do plus equals this dot speed. And we want to make sure we don't go off the screen to the left or the right. So let's put a little if statement in here, just like we did with our player. If this dot x is less than half of the size, and it looks like I put a shift in here of negative 2, so let's put that in now also. So if we're too far to the left or too far to the right, this dot x is greater than the width of the screen, which is in the p5 variable width, and then minus half of the size. And again, let me put this shift in here, plus 2. The reason I put that plus 2 in is I think uh, because once the speed increases, I wanted to have a little buffer in there when I did the correction for this. Um, what we're going to do now, if we get to the left or we get to the right, the, the centipede actually needs to go down the screen. So we're going to call that this.drop. That's a method that we're going to write. So if we go too far to the left, in other words, if we're on the left edge, or we get to the right edge, then we need to drop down to the next column, or the next row, excuse me. That's what the centipede does. It just goes back and forth, left and right. It drops down every time it hits an edge. That means we need to write a method this.drop. Okay, so the first thing that happens when we hit the edge and we want to drop down is we need to turn around and change direction. The way we're going to do that is to multiply speed by negative 1. So we'll do a times equals negative 1 there. We want to move the node down. We're going to move it down one full size. So to move down, you add to the y. One full size plus three extra pixels. Now, if we move down too far, if we get to the bottom of the screen, we want the centipede to show back up at the top of the screen. So if we go past the bottom of the screen, so this uh, this dot y is greater than the height. And I'm going to say minus this dot size over 2 because I don't want the half of the circle to be down at the bottom of the screen. As soon as we're off the screen, uh, which is to say that our center, actually let's just say this dot size. All right, if we're greater than uh, one full size of a centipede node um, past the height, then we're going to uh, set this back to the top. And I need a little extra space at the top, so for now I'm going to call it this dot size plus one, but eventually we're going to have a score up at the top and things like that, so we're going to increase that number when the time comes. But for now, let's see if this makes sense. I don't know why I put that blank line in there. Let me scoot this up so you can actually see it. So our little circles that make up our centipede, they can show themselves. They can move left and right. And when the time comes, they can drop down. If they go off the screen, we can reset them up to the top of the screen. The last thing that I'm going to add for a node is just a little helper function here that I'm going to call this.update rather than having to call both the move and show functions from the main program or from actually the centipede object. I'm just going to call it this.update. 
So we can do both. Oops, I said that. Uh, this will say this dot move and this dot show. Just like we did with the player. That's just something that I like to do to save me a little typing later. Anytime I need to have the characters updated in the playing screen, then we'll do that. Now, I haven't created a node yet. I've just made the definition. So we're not ready to do anything with this yet. What we're going to do is we're going to build a centipede out of these guys. And so that's where the centipede object definition comes in. And we need to define that so we can show one on the screen. So I'm going to call this a centipede. A centipede is going to have a few different features. It's going to have a length. So we know how many nodes are in the centipede. We do want to know the size of the nodes, and we do want to know the speed of the nodes, because we're going to call the node constructor, and we'll have to send it that information. Let's end this function down here. Uh, for now, the property is going to be this.size. Now this.length. This that speed. And uh, this centipede is built from an array of the node objects. So we're going to call that the body. And we're just going to make it a blank array. Now the centipede needs to do a few things, a few methods. One of them is that it needs to be able to regenerate. That's the word I'm using for creating itself. So let's make that method right now. And the only thing we really need to know for that is the speed. I'll show you why I need that in a minute. Because right away when I first do the constructor, I'm actually going to call this function once I create it. OK, now what we're going to do is build our array of centipede nodes. So let's start with a loop. We'll let c equals 0. We will Make C less than equal less than this that length, because that's the length that we want, the one that's sent to the constructor, and we're going to increase it by one each time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a centipede node to the array. So we're going to push on a new centipede node. right there. Okay, now this is where it gets interesting. So we want the position of those centipede nodes to line up next to each other. So we're going to make that a multiple of the C variable, the counter variable. So it's going to be C times this dot size plus four. We want a little gap between them. You'll notice on that original animation that I showed earlier, we had a gap between those. I'm probably going to run out of space here, so let's just set up a little extra. Uh, now, the since C is 0 the first time through, we need to, to shift this by this dot size. So the first x coordinate is C times this dot size plus 4 plus this dot size, and it'll shift from there as multiples of C as C increases. The Y coordinate is the top row plus one that we had before. And then the size is just size and the speed is just speed. I'm going to make sure I closed all my parentheses here. I did. All right. 
And that's all we need to do to regenerate. We run a for loop that just creates a bunch of those centipede nodes and pushes them onto our body array. Okay, a centipede needs to be able to update itself. We don't need to have it draw because the centipede nodes can do the drawing for us. So we're just going to make an update function. And essentially all we're going to do is run through the array this dot body dot length I'm not talking as much in this video I'm doing a lot more typing I don't know if that's good or bad <laughs> whatever there's a lot of to get together just to make the centipede show up um, and then we're just gonna do this dot body Oops. to find the position in the array we need square brackets and we'll call update so we're gonna run update on each node in the array so each body part gets updated and that's how the whole centipede gets updated and then the other thing I want to do when I call this constructor I want to actually create a centipede so to do that I'm gonna call regenerate And I have to send it this dot speed. Now I put that speed parameter in our regenerate function so that when other, when my game calls regenerate and we increase the speed, I can uh, adjust that. The speed is not constant for this object. We're going to, each time we regenerate, we're going to increase the speed in the program. So that's why I include that there. All right, so there's a lot going on. Um, I still haven't done anything with the centipede yet, so it's going to take a while to test this out. But let's go to our game now and let's make an instance of our centipede. Okay, so here's our game file. And I'm going to throw a couple extra constants in here so that if we need to make some changes later, we can do that. Uh, uh, const. And I'm going to make one called centipede start length. And that's just the number of circles that are in our initial centipede. I'm going to make that 10 for now. I'm also going to make a constant, which is the centipede size. That way, if we ever need to change it, we can change it once here. And not have to go through and change it everywhere in our program. And for now, let's try 20. We may decide we want to change that later. Just like I did with my player object, I need to create a variable to keep track of our centipede. So I'm going to make a centipede variable here. I'll declare it, and then we will create it in our setup function right after we created our player. So now, finally, we are actually creating an instance of our centipede. All right, so here it is. We're making a new centipede. Not a centipede node, a centipede. And the parameters that we're going to send are the centipede start length, the centipede size, and then something that I'm calling level speed. So we'll have to talk about that. Centipede start length. Centipede size. Did I spell that right? Yeah, I think I did. And, okay, level speed. So I just made that up. We need to talk about that. As we progress through this game, eventually we're going to have levels. Each time you clear a centipede from the screen, you're going to advance to the next level, and certain things are going to happen. Uh, eventually we'll have these mushrooms on the screen, and it's going to, those mushrooms are going to be layered, so it'll be harder to clear those out in each level. The other thing that will happen is that the centipede will start going faster. So each time we create a centipede, we need to tell, uh, we need to have a speed variable to keep track of that. So I'm going to call that level speed. And so we need to go back up into our global variables. We need to make one called level speed. 
We'll start with our level speed to, uh, set to 1. And then the other thing we need to do is have a variable to keep track of what level we're on. And of course, since we started the game out, that's going to be level 1 as well. Okay. Now, right now, all our draw function does is check to see which scene we're in, and then it calls the screen, uh, the scene function. We only have one scene right now, and that is game playing scene. Remember from the previous video, we just set the background and updated the player so we can move them around the screen. Now we need to get a little more uh, specific here, or we need to be a little more careful, oops, with how we're coding this next part. So there's two things going to happen. The first of all, I definitely want to update my centipede. Oops, spelled update wrong. But the other thing is, if my centipede has disappeared, I want to regenerate. Now that's not going to happen at this point in the game because we are not destroying any of the nodes, but eventually we need this to happen, so I'm going to put it in now. Okay. And so that, that set of code right now is redundant, but eventually we'll need that. All right, so we've set up our centipede objects, which includes a centipede node object and a centipede object. And in the game, we've created an instance of the object in our setup function, and we've added it to the playing game scene, game playing scene. All right, let's find out if this thing is going to work here. This is the wrong code. We need to go to, this says part one code, but this is actually part two now. Let's change that in the index. I changed it here. I did not change it here. Just so you know that I'm viewing the same file. We'll refresh this. And you guessed it. We've got an error. So let's bring up our console. I thought I had that shown already. <sighs> 71. Hmm, this dot body bracket C dot update is not a function. Do I not have an update function in my centipede node? I do have a function right there. Ooh, this could get tricky then. Things here, so, uh, I'm going to pause this video for a second. The recording while I had to figure out what the mistake was. So a couple things I fixed here. First of all, I had a weird parentheses right here uh, after the variable size, which does not belong there. Uh, what I needed instead was to close the parentheses that went with my push, which of course is uh, added out here on the edge. So that's why the program was crashing. And then after I ran it again to make sure it was working, I found that I forgot to put parentheses here on line 27 after this dot drop, right? Drop is, of course, a, of course, a method. And so we do need to put those parentheses there uh, in order to get that to work. Having done all that, Let's go to our browser now, and you can see, let me restart this. This is part two. You can see that we now have a working centipede object on our canvas. And all it's going to do is wind back and forth. Now, remember, we can still control our guy here, uh, but we don't have any collisions in yet. That's going to be for another video. These videos are long enough as it is. Uh, but there's our centipede. It's going to wind through. Um, I'm going to move down here to the edge just so I can show you that they are just going to cross through each other, pass through each other, and uh, nothing's going to happen. I won't make you watch the centipede go all the way to the bottom, but we do want to make sure 
that when it gets to the bottom, it, it pops back up out at the top. So, so for this video, that's it. I need to splice these two videos together and get this thing uploaded. Uh, but that's the end of part two. What we, stu what we need to do next is, of course, introduce uh, some bullets and some collisions so that we can start to actually have a functioning game. Until then, uh, you take care and I'll see you soon.